Hi there, this is Lauren Kimball for ANI 150, and for today's tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to export your texture maps from Substance Painter and bring them into Maya so you can render with Arnold. So I'm going to begin by going up to File and selecting the Export Textures option, which will open up the Export Textures menu. In the menu, you've got three tabs, and the first one is Settings. Here, we're going to go ahead and set our output directory. So basically, these maps, where are they going to go? By default, they want to go to Substance Painter's export folder. I'm going to go click this, and I'm going to go to my desktop and find my project folder, my Axe. And I'm going to look for the Source Images folder. This folder basically is so Maya knows where these maps live, so I don't have to go hunt for them later. I'm going to click on Open, and now I'm going to select what template that I want to use. So it's tempting to want to go for the PBR since we built this in PBR template, but we are going to be rendering this and bringing it into Maya as an Arnold shader. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Arnold standard as my output template choice. Uh, file type, I'm going to go ahead and go with PNG because that's a lossless file format. I don't have to worry about any sort of compression that might come with like say a JPEG. And then I'm going to click on my output templates and I'm going to take a look at the Arnold standard template. So in this template, I see we've got our base color, metalness, roughness, normal, height, emissive. Most of these maps are great. I don't have an emissive on this project, and I also want to bring in an ambient occlusion map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this template, and I'm going to duplicate it by clicking on these two, this button with these two little um, document icons on it. Click on that, and you'll see that it recreated the Arnold standard uh, template with the word copy next to it. I'm going to double click that and I'm going to rename this AO so I remember that this specific preset adds the ambient occlusion map. Now that I have this selected, so the current preset is the AO, Arnold standard AO, I'm going to go down here and click on the X next to emissive maps because I don't want an emissive map. And instead I'm going to go up here to create and there are five options on the type of map that I can create and I'm going to go with gray because ambient occlusion is a black and white map. All right, so now that I have this new node, I'm gonna go look up here and I see all the different presets for my other maps, and there's a couple that are gray. I'm just gonna click on one of those, press Control A to select all, Control C to copy, go down here and press Control V to paste. So now I've got the naming convention pasted in here. I'm gonna find the word metalness and I'm gonna take it out and I'm going to rename this Ambient Occlusion. There we go. Now that's not enough to make this the Ambient Occlusion. If you look over here, we have all the different types of maps that we can input. All the maps that have a little colored box next to them, those, bo those particular maps have already been assigned to this preset. So I'm going to look at this, and, and they're in alphabetical order, so let's scroll to the top and find the Ambient Occlusion Map option. I'm going to click it, and drag it over to the gray box and let go. It's going to ask what channel I want from this ambient occlusion. I'm going to say the gray channel. Now when I look over on my input maps list there is a little colored box next to ambient occlusion indicating that it is now part of this preset. Perfect. Now I'm going to click on list of exports. Just a quick note, you only have to do this one time. After that, every time you want to export these specific maps, you just have to go to the preset menu and look for the Arnold AO that you've created. Unless, of course, you're working off of a different computer, then you will have to repeat this step. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click on list of exports and just kind of double check what I have here. You see uh, base color, emissive height, metalness, normalness, rough, normal, and roughness. Perfect. Oh, not perfect. We got emissive. Hmm. I think I need to go back to my settings and make sure. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Arnold Standard AO. So I got to go back here and reset my output template. Let's look at the list of exports again. Base color, height, metalness, normal, perfect. Now it definitely is ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and click export. And boom, all my maps have been exported. So let's go ahead and minimize this and open up the Axe folder. Is icons. Let's go ahead and look at source images and there are our maps. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up Maya. In Maya I already have my Axe low poly showing and I'm going to quickly just do a quick render view and see how things are looking. 
clearly everything's black. Why? Because there are no lights set up in my scene. So since I'm going to be rendering this in Arnold, I'm just going to throw in some quick lights. Let's go ahead and click on the Arnold tab and let's go down to lights and click on Sky Dome. So a Sky Dome is essentially creating a surface that's going to reflect light onto your object. Right now, I think it's default set to just a gray color, but you can plug in any sort of HDRI image and utilize it for image-based lighting in this scene. But for right now, just having some semblance of light in our scene is all I need so that I can just see how the textures are looking on the axe. All right, perfect. So now that I've got the Sky Dome, and I'm gonna go ahead and add it to a render layer. Let's name this Sky Dome. Save it and double click this so that I don't grab it all the time. So that's gonna become very annoying. Okay, so now it's time to bring in the textures from Substance Painter. All right, so you'll look up here and you see these little tabs. You're probably familiar with them, like the poly modeling tab. Uh, but we have one over here to the far right that says far right that says substance. And in here you've got all these options for utilizing um, a kind of a connection with Substance Painter. So it's a plugin that helps you transfer things from Substance into Maya. Now, if you do not see this tab, you can go over here to Windows, Settings and Preferences, and click on the Plugin Manager. In the Plugin Manager, this thing basically holds all the presets that could possibly exist in Maya. Sometimes they're not all turned on, so I'm going to go over here and type in Substance. And there we go, we have all the Substance Painter plugins. They're already set to auto load. I could click refresh, close, whatever I need to do once I've activated them. But they're already activated in my scene. That's just what you would need to do if you're not seeing this particular tab, this particular shelf. All right, so now that we have this shelf going, the button that we want to use is this one right here. It's like five from the left. And it has this picture of these little images all pointing to a shader. And this button, as, as the highlight says, is Apply Workflow to Maps. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And this lovely little window pops up. Workflow, Arnold, good. Let's select multiple maps. And because we had the foresight to put our maps in the Source Images folder, they are right there waiting for us. I'm just going to shift click all these maps and press select. And by default, it looks at the names and plugs them into the right place. If for some reason something doesn't get plugged in, you can always click on a folder and select that specific map that you want put in that section. But here we go, height to height, occlusion, metallic to metallic, roughness, normal. Okay, we're good to go. Apply. All right, so now I'm going to go activate the hypershade. And inside my hypershade, I have my default. Here, this is going to drive me crazy. Just double click this. Make that full screen. Okay, so inside a hypershade, We've got our Lambert, our default shaders. We now have a displacement node and our Arnold node. I'm going to go ahead and drag this over to the axe head and to the axe arm. And now I can see that these have been applied. Let's minimize hypershade and go ahead and click on this little render preview button. And there we go. All the textures have been brought in to Maya effectively. So there's a really cool plugin. So you can also see in the hypershade down here, if I click on the Arnold shader and I click input output button, you can see how Maya's already applied everything. In fact, let's click this input output and there's that displacement map. And they're already automatically attached to a placement node. So if you had a repeating texture that you wanted to manipulate, you don't have to worry about going through each channel. They're already plugged in for you. It's really nice. Anyway, that concludes the tutorial. Hope you found it helpful and have a great evening.